Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is the Kevin Sullivan Advice channel. Thanks for watching my channel. Right now, this video, I just want to give uh, a few, uh, uh, just some information out about uh, covert narcissists. This is not um, my complete, um, my complete series I'm going to be doing about covert narcissists and overt narcissists. But I got a few got some time right now just to give out some things for you so i'm gonna take that time out to give you guys some information so first what you got to know about the covert narcissists is they covert they uh it, it's what they're doing is un unknowledgeable to you so you don't really know it's, it's unknowledgeable to you they covert you don't know but it's happening that's the whole meaning of a covert See with an overt narcissist, it's it's plain out there. It's it's out there. You know, even if the red flags is out in the open, you can see them, but it's your choice to ignore it when it comes from an overt narcissist. The overt narcissist is is there. You see it on them. It's just see with the co but the covert the covert hides it. They they hide it. It's 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 hot. It's hidden. It's covert, but it is there. This what makes them so sneaky and dangerous. What you have to understand about the covert narcissists is that they are weak individuals. Uh, they are predators, but they are weak though. They're weak predators. They're predators, they're, they're dangerous, but they're weak though. So with that being said, this is how they are extra, they can actually be, you know, um, covert. You know, and they want to hide it more than anything. So, because they are weak and very cowards, very much so cowards. So, ladies and gentlemen, the covert narcissist is very jealous of you and very, a lot of people is, most narcissists are, most toxic people are, and they're forth, etc. But the narcissist, the covert narcissist in particular is very jealous of you because the narcissist, covert narcissists don't have no ambition. They lack of, they mostly people who just sit around. They won't make things happen. They won't go do things and make things happen. And when they see someone doing that, the opposite of them, when they see someone doing opposite of them, then it becomes a problem to them. They become very jealous, envious, and enraged. So, they will be showing you red flags. It will come out. They covert, but it will come out. A covert narcissist who don't like you always trying to get you in a conversation. They always want you in a conversation. And the conversation is to get information about you, about how you think, and so they could disagree with you. The covert narcissist will have disagreements with you about the way you think because they don't want you to think the way you think. They hate the way that you think because they hate you. So they don't like the way that you think. So with that being said, they will only agree with you if you agree with them. See, they love when you agree with them. And it could be something normal, like something normal. And they are so excited that you agree with them about it. And it's something so simple. Like if you like chocolate milk, I'm not excited because everybody, because uh, people or someone prefer chocolate milk than regular milk, right? But to the covert narcissist, this is a big thing. You like something they like, they take it as, they want to uh, throw a party about it, uh, want a big hug, they want to shake your hand or give you some dap because you like chocolate milk, prefer chocolate milk over regular milk as they do, which millions of people prefer chocolate milk over. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's not that serious. But that is the thinking of the covert narcissist. The covert narcissist wants you to be involved with things that they're doing only so that you can give them all the information that they need to get something done. But the problem with that is that not only do they want you to give them the information, 
They want you to tell them the information, but they don't want to do the work. So they want you to do the work for them, but they're not going to tell you this. You'll have you be saying to yourself, well, I gave you the information. Why don't you go do what you need to do? But that's not how they see it. See, when someone don't believe in themselves and someone is scared to fail, they never succeed and they scared to fail. So this is why they won't start or do something. Whether it's completing a course in college or starting a business or trying to go for a promotion, et cetera, et cetera. They are scared of no rejection or failing. So this is the reason why they will not, they will not do the work. They will keep talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. And then they have unrealistic conversations and goals about their life, stuff that they can't do. Uh, they will tell you that at, they will tell you that they're about to accomplish something and do something that they see other people do that you can obviously see you're not going to do that. It's not true. You can't do that. But you'll say it to yourself, you won't say it to them. It's plenty of things that people, you know, like me, I'm not going to be a pilot. You know, um, that's just something I'm not going to do. That's just something not for me. Speaking of reference of my purpose or choice, I'm not going to do that because that's not me. It's just not fit for me. Right. So that's normal of me knowing who I am and what I want to do and not doing it. See, but with the covert narcissists, they want to do everything that you do or everyone else does. So they don't know themselves or if they do even do have a gift or a talent, what happens is that they don't they don't know how to take constructive criticism. There's no such thing as constructive, constructive criticism to them. It's just criticism and they can't take it and they can't um, handle it. They take criticism as criticism and even more than criticism. They take it as you're trying to down them constructive criticism too. So you're wasting your time telling them the truth about anything. Just let them do what they do and stay out of the way because they're not going to listen if you say, well, you're doing this wrong. Or you tell them, well, you have to get better. Or you tell them, well, you're not good enough. They will not take heed to that and they will get infuriated with you about saying that. And then they'll think that you're jealous of them and you're trying to stop them. The covert narcissist is someone that the covert narcissist is someone who likes to buy people. And when someone tries to buy you, it's because they are they have a hidden agenda. For one, right? They are insecure. And they are buying you to have a friendship or whatever type of ship relationship that it may be but they're buying you and they know that they're not good enough and when someone tries to buy you they know they're not good enough themselves to buy you i mean they're not good enough themselves to really have it so they'll buy you so that's why they give you gifts also the covert narcissists give you gifts so they can control the situation and the dynamics of the relationship if you keep your distance from them, which you should, because no good comes out of them. Even a conversation will turn into this whole big thing. It turns into a debate. These people love to debate about their views of life and they just know everything. And it's coming from a peasant stand, a peasant's uh, stand of thoughts. So what happens is when you do keep your distance what happens is they try to be the person that gives these people are givers and stay away from them and don't accept their gifts because they're giving to now control you so now you have to deal with me because i gave you this and you'll notice and see that they are infatuated and be assessed with you taking the gift if you say you don't want it if you say you don't need it or that's okay i don't want the gift they will persist and they will do things that, oh, come on, da, 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 da. 
trying to force you and manipulating you to take the gift. That's a big red flag of a narcissist and especially a covert narcissist. They cannot, because they have to buy people. They try to buy people a, a company, uh, try to buy a relationship because they hate to be alone. Like they hate to be alone with themselves because these are very weak people and they need people to talk to. These are people who you would talk all day. I mean, they talk all day, blah, 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 blah. They always want a conversation about something. They take things literally too personal. They overthink and they don't like spending time with themselves. So they want to spend time with people. So they will take up all your time, waste your time about silly nonsense. And they want to argue and debate about everything. Why? Because they have nothing else to do. When one can't stand alone or enjoy themselves, self-smooth themselves, or enjoy their own company, this is someone who needs another person to be around to entertain them. So you will be entertaining them. And this person will be draining you of your time and energy. They are energy vampires. So I stay away from people who always need to have a conversation and always talk about any and everything. These are people who will tell a story about everything. I mean, everything has to be a conversation and they want to make it a long conversation at that. I mean, it's like they'll tell you anything. They'll say, oh, I, I had an apple, I seen a little hole. Think I have an apple, see a little hole, think it was a worm in it, and it wasn't. They have to tell you that. Why do you have to tell me that? It wasn't a worm. I could have seen if a worm was in there, like, oh, I really found the worm in my apple. Okay, cool. I never had, that's, that's something to say, uh, you know, because that's something we've seen and known, you know, from even school books. But the worm won't be there and they'll think it, but they still need to tell you. Uh, there's no excitement in the story. There's nothing solid in the story. There's barely even any contact in the story, but they just bring up anything to start a conversation. They are attention seekers. They will try to make you uh, speak to them. So if you're quiet or you're not the person who knows that you don't need to keep speaking to a person 50 times a day they will try to get your attention anyhow even if that's they'll say hi to you they'll keep saying hi to you like they're checking up on you like i don't need you to check up on me i said hi to you an hour ago just because we've seen each other don't mean we need to say hi again that's at work that's if you live in the same household uh same neighborhood same community or whatever that is a part uh, uh, that you guys are a part of together. They will keep trying to get your attention. And one other thing about them is that they are manipulators. They think that the world should think like them and that they think that they know everything. They believe they know everything and what's wrong about the world. So their views of the world is different from yours in a way, but some of it could be the same like the simplest things you know and most of these things is they get information from you know other people so their way of thinking might come from information they got from somebody else you know or maybe youtube because a lot of information on youtube so they'll take that and agree with it but the information has to be something that they already agree with then they agree with it and mostly the information would be about how bad the world is and all these conspiracies and this is that, the government this and the world is this and, the, and it's all bad. It has a bad view on life in the world. And, and for example, you see you take that, right? But it has some truth in it. So they'll even in the conversation with them, you'll find some truth in it that you agree with them about because you understand this stuff, this information, however you understand it, or your knowledge, wisdom, and other, your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of it, however you have it. So you'll agree with them on some stuff. And it, again, they just believe it because they already against it. You know, 
it, it, it fits with their thinking of, well, this is why this, this is why is that, you know. So here's the thing. They'll be happy and glad that you agree with them ab about that. But it will take a twist. See, their thinking has, they, they twist it. They think backwards. So again, <laughs> they will still have a different opinion about you, about the world. Because see, it goes too far. See, you and I understand that the world's not perfect. We understand certain things that's going on, that goes on, certain systems, certain things that have uh, been in place and certain things that's taken place. I mean, we all understand it, right? So they understand it from and got the information from that level too. But they go overboard with it. It's to the extreme. It's either there's kind of no gray with them and there's no middle ground or no middle area with them. It's kind of like, you know, 